This is a Leaders in Learning special furnished by CapEd Credit Union. Well, thank you for joining us for this Leaders in Learning special. I'm Sarah Jacobson. It's been a challenging year for education. The pandemic forced school districts, teachers, students, and families to make decisions they never had before. CBS2 and CapEd Credit Union have been highlighting the educators that, despite all of these challenges, continue to make a difference in the lives of Idaho children. Every Thursday, there's a new story to tell in our weekly Leaders in Learning series. CapEd is passionate about supporting these teachers and schools since 2020. 12, and the credit union has invested nearly $400,000 into teacher grants in our state. Education touches everyone uh, in the community. If you, you're either a parent who's having kids uh, being educated in the schools or you're a employer wanting to hire people that know how to read and write and communicate with others that they've learned in the public schools or you're an, a, a grandparent that have grandkids that are being educated or even an aunt and uncle maybe that have nieces and nephews that are being educated. So it touched so many different parts of the community that we felt that the best way that CapEd can enrich the community is to support educational endeavors such as teacher grants. Teachers can apply for the $750 grants through CapEd's website. They typically get around 50 requests a month. Narrowing it down to eight can be a challenge, but CapEd encourages teachers to keep trying so they can keep supporting them. The teachers, they come up with uh, some very innovative and creative ways to communicate with the, the students and so they need things to help them with that, uh, whether it's uh, electrical equipment or, or uh, other teaching aids that they need. Um, they'll request that in their grants and then if they're awarded, then they've got a little bit extra money to help them accomplish that. And teachers can apply for those grants through CapEd's website. Now, CapEd members are also making a difference through the Get $100, Give $100 program. When customers open up a high-yield checking account, they can get $100 into their account and give an additional $100 to an Idaho school of their choice. We see individuals giving to sports programs, whether that be the baseball, the football, the dance and the cheer, uh, to bowling, to elements around robotics. Uh, we also see individuals simply saying we want to give it as general school support and provide that resource to the school and it's at their discretion of how they would like to receive, rather how they would like to use that $100. And so far, members have helped raise nearly $200,000 for more than 300 Idaho schools. That money can go a long way, especially during these times. We understand that education is a great equalizer. And as we go through the challenges of a pandemic and we come through on the other end of the pandemic, we know there's a lot of stress on the education community. And in this case, it's an opportunity to not only support them now, but also in the future uh, through our program. Now let's take a look at some of the great work that's been taking place across our state. Schools are working remotely this year and with that is a growing concern about potential learning loss. But a new approach developed by a local teacher should help with that. Good morning. Go ahead and turn your mics on. Many students are learning remotely this year and with it comes a new concern over potential learning loss known as the COVID slide. We are experiencing like the first time in our kids educational experiences where they had extended time away from school. The slide would be what we usually call summer slide right where whatever they've gained during the school year we expect them to have a little bit of a setback once they return in the fall now double that length of time because we were gone for six-ish months instead of just the two and a half that were usually gone and so we're just making up ground now as the school year is up and running. Megan Axman is a reading intervention specialist at Taft Elementary School. She's working to combat the COVID slide through assessments and technology. No easy task as her students span over six grade levels. Because we have such a range of kids at my school at Taft, we're a Title I school, so we serve low-income families. We have about 30% refugee families as well, so there's a whole language element to it too. And while the issue isn't new, she tells me it is compounded, and she's working to close that gap. This year is just a bigger gap, right? The, the spread is larger, and we form small groups around their ability needs. This year, Axman is implementing that new approach. 
Following a state ICE station Card assessment, board. students are then placed into small virtual groups no based on pinpoint criteria. She tells me that she's already seeing a difference, giving her students one-on-one -on -one attention based on skill level, but also fostering collaboration. At my school, we use that data to form our groups and then we assess monthly and then rearrange if we need to or just keep going if we need to. She tells me that virtual book rooms are another tool, fostering an environment where students feel connected with their classmates and excited about learning. It's the perfect population of students. My staff is awesome. Our parents are awesome. So it's just a special little school. During the pandemic, a lot of school music programs either shut down or found new ways to make music. As one teacher shows us, making music during the pandemic is m about more than just learning to play an instrument. Music Two, teaches so much. Remember, because we play through it once and dot, dot, line, line, play it with me one more time, we go back and do it a double time. It has been proven so many times how good it is for brains, especially young developing brains, because every day we are, we are learning a foreign language, whether you um, can see that or not. Um, we are doing reading skills because we're tracking things left to right. Erin right? Middlehoven is the music teacher at Crimson Point Elementary School in CUNA. Teaching six grade levels twice a week, she's making sure her students stay safe while learning. A lot of different things we can do with that. It's never a dull moment. With coronavirus restrictions like physical distancing and masks, Miss Middlehoven and other music teachers in her district got creative. Most of my job involves playing instruments, singing, and moving. And that's like probably 99% of my job. And those three things are kind of off the books. We can't do a lot of them this year. Her class is socially distanced and masked, but it's these individual instrument kits that are helping keep the tunes alive. Music is everywhere, right? Um, we can make musical instruments out of just about anything, and that's half the fun. From beat boards to drumsticks, pool noodles, they make a really nice little sand block, and even a beat buddy. It's a good way to kind of give them that inner sense of beat, and they bounce it on their hand. This doesn't stop at her class. Mrs. Middlehoven created these individual music kits for each student at her school. Each bag contains different instruments and tools based on age group, keeping the music alive for this generation of young learners. They will have skills that they will use and enjoy the rest of their life. So that's that to me is the most important, I think. <laughs> Coronavirus has upended consumer science classes. Students are now required to have their own supplies. I spoke with one local teacher who says she's in need of some extra measures. Our district scores rather low in fractions. Kids have a hard time with it. Um, and so when I do it in here, it's funny, you eat it, you know, <laughs> it's fun. But um, with the new COVID restrictions, it's individual equipment. So they can't even share a measuring spoon. They can't, they can't share any equipment, which makes it tricky. Tricky and tedious. With a working budget cut by 80% and now only two students per kitchen and individual tools for each student, Mrs. Tanya King, family and consumer science teacher at Lowell Scott Middle School, is getting creative. I read up on the CDC guidelines. I read up on the lead FCS document. And I highlighted, went through and summarized everything for the department, told the principal, and she said, we don't have the money for it. An educator for more than 30 years, Mrs. King tells me that many life skills are learned in this classroom, from cooking to sewing and understanding how to create. You learn more by doing, right? From measuring labs to cooking healthy meals, even learning how to sew their own masks. But Mrs. King tells me she's doing all she can to give her students the opportunity for hands-on learning. When I got here, the department was was um, was aging. It's been an uphill battle because, you know, our budgets don't include, uh, for example, new refrigerators. Through grants from Lowe's, Mrs. King was able to get four new refrigerators and a new washer and dryer, even an alumni donation of four brand new KitchenAids, something that hadn't been updated since the school opened in the 70s. Mrs. King even has her own cookbook, giving her students a chance to be featured on the Wall of Fame. 
And so if they, if they sew or cook something at home, they send me a picture or they bring in a picture of it and I put it up there so they can see that, oh yeah, this isn't just something I have to do for Mrs. King's class, but it's something that I'm going to really use. If you'd like to help Mrs. King's class, go to DonorsChoose.com and search Yummy Fun Fractions to donate to her classroom, helping her students learn one scoop and sew at a time. And every week, CapEd sponsors a Leaders in Learning segment where we highlight students, teachers, or schools in the Treasure Valley who are making a positive impact on education here in our community. Now, if you know of someone we should feature, send me an email at leadersinlearning at kboi2.com. You can see it right here on air. Coming up, taking lessons beyond the classroom, the new approach that is giving students a better understanding of science. And later, how a local special education teacher is helping her students succeed amid the pandemic. This is a Leaders in Learning special, furnished by CapEd Credit Union. Welcome back. You've probably seen this before. The Read to Rise balloon is a familiar sight at the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic and at our local schools. The balloon inspires kids to take their reading to the next level. Back in 2016, CapEd started the Read to Rise program. It's a fun competition that keeps kids reading during the summer so they don't fall behind. Now, since the program started, more than 740 students from nearly 80 schools have read more than 500,000 total minutes. That's a lot of books. And CapEd believes in giving children the tools they need to succeed. That's why CapEd is making an investment in early learning. Research has shown that those who struggle uh, in reading and don't learn to read by third grade well will struggle academically and may never recover. As a result, we are uh, investing $75,000 in the early childhood learning area. A couple examples would be uh, uh, support for uh, immigrant child care facilities and support for pre-kindergarten programs in CUNA, uh, Caldwell and Boise. And for many at CapEd, supporting students isn't just part of their job, it's about making a difference in the communities that they serve. I was a teacher for 20 some years. Uh, before that, I was in the military for 26 or so. I have my own children. I realize how important, how critical those early years are. And uh, I'm just excited that CapEd uh, has taken on the role here of, uh, in their vision of uh, supporting these efforts. Teachers, they have great ideas, but they don't always have the funds to make them happen. And that's where DonorsChoose.org comes in. Now, it's a place where teachers can share their ideas for projects and community members can all pitch in to support it. Here locally, CapEd Credit Union partners with DonorsChoose.org through its We Love Teachers program. Together, CapEd Credit Union and its members have given almost $31,000 to school projects through the We Love Teachers program in partnership with DonorsChoose. Now, here's a look at how one teacher is using that program to help students understand the wonders of science. The reading, the writing, and the math, it's all kind of the, the core foundation for everything that I do. But then sprinkled on the top, the icing on top is definitely science. Rebecca Thayer, a second grade teacher in the Melba School District, has been educating Idahoans for the last 19 years. During that time, science has become one of her favorite focuses. Science is super fun. Anybody can engage in it. It's thinking. It gets them thinking outside of the box. They come up with creative solutions to problems. And um, these kids in this class, they have a lot of good ideas. Yesterday's science, it was almost a failure, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. But we learned not to give up and we tried something different. And then, um, and then we got it to work. This year, Mrs. Thayer's students are back in the classroom. They showed me just a few experiments they've been working on. But as the pandemic continues to create an uncertain semester, Thayer is making sure her students are prepared. I'm super excited to have kids in my classroom again. Um, but also I wanted to have an idea in my mind about how if we were, if we had to move into yellow or red, that I could get the science to them. She had previously used a program called Mystery Science. It features interactive lessons, data collection, and hands-on experiments. 
And so I was thinking, I can do this myself. And so that's what I've been doing. And really, it doesn't, it doesn't take a lot of money for that piece. And it doesn't take a lot of time. It just, just does take some prep and some thinking ahead of time. And I've had to be really economical about how I go about those experiments. In general, it cost me about 20 cents uh, a kid for them to have these little science experiments. But I, I also know that mystery science is going to give me what I need. These experiments take place in the classroom or can be done at home with parents. Their, their science um, packets are kind of something that they earn and they get to take home and share with their families. I have almost all my kids get their homework done every week so they can bring home their um, science experiments to do with their families. And this isn't just for her classroom. Mrs. Thayer is doing this for her entire school, but she needs your help. Really, it's our whole school. I've, I've received the grant before for our whole school to do it, and they went to my, our principal this year, and they said, we'd really love it if Mystery Science was available to all of us again. And so she asked me if I could put together a grant, and that's why I'm here, is to work on getting this for our whole school again, um, because they're wonderful. If you would like to donate to Mrs. Thayer's Mystery Science Grant for Melba Elementary School, head on over to DonorsChoose.com, a website where community members can help pay for local school projects just like this. Well, digital learning has changed the way millions of students interact, engage, and ultimately learn. But what does that mean for special ed students? Meet a local special education teacher who's making sure no student is left behind. Some of my kids are fully virtual, and then some of them uh, come in twice a week for a few hours at a time. Lorelai Hodgson, middle school special education teacher at River Glen Middle School, says she spent the summer preparing her class for digital learning, and now she's back in the classroom virtually. It's really nice to be able to have my kids come, the, those certain amount of kids come in person, but I do have my kids that are fully online. Both of my kids that are online are nonverbal, and um, they don't have a communication device, so they um, have a lot of different other, a lot of ways that they communicate. And that interaction comes in the way of communication cards. I sent home a binder uh, just with some communication cards. So, for example, I created a card that says hello and goodbye, and so they can hold that up, and so we can see it on our end. And that communication, coupled with interactive activity, she says, makes all the difference. Uh, we have been using a platform called Boom Cards, and Boom Cards has been really, really fun for my kids because there's a lot of sounds involved. Um, my kids are lucky enough to have touchscreen devices, so they're able to... Um, touch the screen and it will make a sound. And it's not just her students, she's working to help. I mean, I'm teaching parents now too. Um, a lot of my um, parents are amazing and are working with their kids at home. So that way they can access, you know, the materials and the education and um, yeah, the curriculum that we're implementing. We've all been learning a lot, um, you know, how to share our screen and how to put it in present mode and um, how to use the chat feature. And they're just amazing. And I, I think their, their kids are really learning, you know, how to communicate with their parents and me through this virtual learning. Ms. Hodgson sent me this video body, of one of her virtual then, classes. Uh -huh. She says engagement the and understanding are, are her two goals, whether that's with antenna. boom cards, sing-alongs. She tells yeah. me she couldn't do it alone. I've been able to see the positives of this is that I'm able to see the parent working with their student and that's teaching me like what different ways that I can work with that student as well. So I've just, it's been, it opened up this whole new realm of like, oh, I never even thought of that or, you know. Creating a roadmap for virtual learning, how one school has been online from the get go, tips they have for families trying to navigate the unfamiliar. This is a Leaders in Learning special, furnished by CapEd Credit Union. CapEd's focus on early learning is literally impacting thousands of children, families, and early childhood educators across Idaho. 
That's Beth Oppenheimer with the Idaho Association for the Education of Young Children. The AEYC works to help children from birth to five years old get a jump start on their education. Preparing a child for school begins at home, but parents can often feel unqualified. So the Idaho AEYC and CapEd teamed up to make tools available for all Idaho parents. CapEd has consistently and generously funded Idaho AEYC to deliver our Ready for Kindergarten program since 2016. And we know that it, when it comes to early learning, young children really learn best through engagement with people that they love and they trust. So whether that is a parent at home, a child care provider, a teacher, a grandparent, whoever that might be. So what does high quality early learning look like? It doesn't have to be formal. In fact, it's actually the opposite. The AEYC encourages parents to play with their children with the secret of purpose for preparing them for school. For more information on the AEYC, its workshops, and how you can get involved, go to IdahoAEYC.org. Now, digital learning has been a hurdle for just about every school district in Idaho, and yet there are some schools that have been virtual from the beginning. I got some tips and tricks from an expert in the field. As schools across Idaho transition to digital learning, Kelly Edgington, head of school for Idaho Virtual Academy, says their school is leading the way online. When that pandemic hit, our kids had this unique benefit that everything was falling apart in the world, right? It seemed like and they had a unique situation where they could consistently school. An educator in Idaho since 1991, Edgington began her career with Idaho Virtual Academy in its infancy back in 2002. I don't think anybody knew much about virtual education, so I really had a unique opportunity to help build our school from the ground up. Starting with just 900 students back in 02, Edgington tells me she empathizes with teachers and educators across the state right now. It was very difficult, and but we started putting it together then and working together to build together. And, and I would imagine things like that are happening in the brick and mortar schools that have been forced into that too. And she says during that time, their teachers were leading, thinking outside the box, problem solving, and helping navigate their way through digital learning. We need a teacher, and so the teachers are just such a vital part of any education system, and, and it's evolved, so teachers are teaching classes every day, live, on, online, and we work really closely with families. She tells me that families choose Idaho Virtual Academy for different reasons, whether that's a flexible schedule or needing additional guidance for special education or the gifted and talented. But this year, she says, has given Idaho Virtual Academy a chance to help. She shared a few simple tips. Be organized, have a plan. I like to have a calendar. I block off time to do things and your calendar can get away from you too. If you're working at home, uh, sometimes you might look up and it's nine o'clock at night. Don't let that happen. <laughs> so you've got to have some personal time for yourself. She also says communicating with families and having a positive mindset are all intentional, tangible ways for success. For more tips, head to IdahoNews.com and click on this story. Well, thank you for joining us for this CBS2 Leaders in Learning special. To see more of our stories from this series, go to IdahoNews.com. And if you know of someone who's making a positive impact on education, send me an email at leadersinlearning at kboi2.com. They might be featured right here in our weekly Leaders in Learning segment sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. Thank you for watching.